Hi, this is Hugh T, and this is about my needle aspiration. Um, this is actually my first video, so I'm really excited. Hopefully it goes well. Um, I was actually inspired by Ushki in Germany. She has a couple videos out there, and there's a few things that I went through that were much different than hers. So I wanted to share my story. She really helped me out, and I'm hoping that maybe I can help somebody out too. So the way that my story goes is at the end of 2009, I was feeling really, really tired. I gained almost 30 pounds. Um, it was holiday season, so I didn't think anything of it. Um, just thought maybe I had a really good year. So I went to the doctor and I said, hey, look, you know, I've gained all this weight. And he said, you know what, you're right, you have. Let's check your thyroid. Let's, let's check your glucose um, and make sure that everything is fine. Sure enough, comes back, everything's fine. Completely normal, he says. So I'm thinking, great. I just gained a whole bunch of weight and don't even know why. So then we get to about March 2010. And um, I feel this lump on my neck. And I'm thinking, what is that? And I thought, well, maybe I'm just feeling sick. Um, my glands or something swollen. So I'm going to go back to see the doctor. So I go to the doctor and I said, hey, look there's a lump on my neck, like something's definitely got to be wrong, and he fills it, and he says, sure thing, you're right, there is a lump on your neck, so I'm going to send you out, I'm going to have you get a, I believe it was an I-123 um, radiation scan where you take a pill, and then they, um, they scan your not, which was a nodular, they scan the bump nodular, and to see if it absorbs any radiation, um, so mine did, it was a cold nodular, and um, I guess they want to know if it's hot or cold, so mine was cold, which means it doesn't absorb any of the, the iodine. Um, so I guess they can see it better, you know, they can get a better picture of it. Um, found out that I had a four centimeter nodular on it, on my, my thyroid, and my mom had a goiter around the same age that I am, and I'm 36. So I didn't think much of it because she said hers went away. So I thought, well, maybe mine will go away too. So seven months passed and my husband, who I would say saved my life, um, kept on telling me, honey, you got to go get it checked out. Go see the doctor and get it checked. And so finally, I don't know why I was so stubborn. Finally, I went. Um, November 2010, had my appointment to see the endocrinologist. Um, it took so long because they're really busy guys. Never knew that. Um, so I go in there and I see him and what does he tell me? He says, yep, after looking at all your stuff, you're going to need a biopsy done. We're going to do a needle aspiration, which is where I'm going to stick a needle into your neck, into your nodular, and I'm going to try to get some of the tissue and then we're going to squirt it onto a disc and we'll send that in and see if there's any abnormalities there. So um, December came and went because he was really busy and um, he took three weeks off so that was kind of hard to now wait. Whenever I had waited for seven months you think what's well, three weeks but it was really hard. So January 24th 2011 is the day that I get my needle aspiration and I go in they tell me to change my top, put on a little gown, and he comes in with his nurse, and they say, we need you to lie back on the table and bend your neck back as far as you absolutely can get it. So I'm laying on the table with this bent back as far as I can get it. I'm told, do not move. Do not hold your breath. And um, it should be over in no time. So I shut my eyes as tight as I could possibly get him, and I'm starting to pray. I'm, I go to my happy place. I'm just thinking, let this be over. And I hear him unwrapping what was the needle. Um, so I hear him unwrapping it, and then um, I ask him, I said, wait, wait, are you going to numb me? And he said, well, I'm going to have to poke you anyways, you know, to numb you. So it doesn't take that long. It takes, takes a few minutes. We'll be done. Um, so why poke you? another time which is you know not necessary and I'm thinking hmm pain maybe a little bit necessary so I say alright of course he's the doctor thinking back I wish that I would have insisted that he numbed it um, so eyes closed tight hands folded over me squeezing them as tight as I could possibly get them um, there goes the needle and I think 
holy cow. Didn't really say that word, but it hurts. Um, and I want to be a big girl. I didn't want to cry about it. I unfortunately had nobody that can go with me. My husband was working, family. My mom was working. She lives two and a half hours away. So I had to go by myself, and it was like in the middle of the day. Um, I took the only appointment he had. I didn't care when it was. So I get through needle number one. I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, finally that's over. And each one, when they put it in there, they have to kind of jiggle it to try to get as much as the tissue to go up into the syringe. So he pulls that one out, and I hear another needle getting unwrapped. This is needle number two that he's unwrapping. And I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, okay, we can do this. Be strong. Let's get through this one. Same thing. He pokes me, juggling it around, trying to get the tissue in there. Um, nurse keeps on telling me, don't hold your breath. Of course, I want to hold my breath. And I hear number three get unwrapped. And I am thinking at this point, you have got to be kidding me. I can't believe I am getting a third poke now. And nurse, don't hold your breath. He's doing doing it. I'm thinking, okay, almost over. We're going to be done. Number four gets unwrapped. Um, at this point, I'm thinking there cannot be a fifth one. This is the last one. I am completely done. Not a chance. Here goes number five. At this point, I am praying to dear Lord Jesus. Please let this be over. I don't know what I did to piss off this guy. I don't know if it was his holidays that weren't good or what. Why am I going through all of this torture? So finally he gets done. And um, she's like, all done. That's what the nurse tells me. Like, you know, that was a piece of cake. Um, I open my eyes and she's like, "Hun, your hands are completely white because I was squeezing them so tight over the front of me. I had them locked together. Um, I, it, it was just not the most pleasant experience. So um, he says, you know what, get dressed and I will be back in a few minutes and we'll talk about the next step. So um, almost like it's no big deal. At this point still, not one tear, not one tear shed out of my eyes and I was so impressed with myself because if my husband would have been there or somebody else, I probably would have been bawling like a big baby. Um, but I guess since I didn't have anyone to hold my hand, I don't know why she didn't hold my hand. Um, I just wanted to be tough. I really wanted to be strong and just like get through it. And so then he comes back in and he says, um, it's going to take about a two, a couple weeks, at least two weeks for us to get the results back. And, um, I said, all right, I live two, I live an hour and 15 minutes away. Can you please just give me a call? And he's like, sure, we'll call you with the results. No big deal. Um, so I say, okay, I walk out of his office know that I'm going to get a phone call in two weeks. Um, as soon as I left out of the front door, I start crying like a big baby. The tears are rolling down my cheeks. Um, I was really upset that my husband couldn't be there, which was not his fault. I was um, happy as all heck that that was finally over and I didn't have to go through another one. And when it was actually over, I forgot this part. I told him, well, do you normally do five of these? And he said, well, I really wanted to make sure I got a really good sample because I would hate for you to come back again. And I told him, well, in that case, I'm glad you did because I can't go through this again. This was a lot. And um, yeah, so I'm glad that he actually did the five once it was all over. Um, and then at this point, I'm pissed because now I've got to drive an hour and 15 minutes all the way home, completely emotional, with nobody to talk to. Well, I actually called my husband as soon as I, I was done, but that conversation was kind of crazy because I was so emotional from not being able to cry, or at least not wanting to cry. Um, most of it was kind of gibberish on the phone, so it was quite an ordeal. Glad I went through it. Um, and so at this point now, it's wait two weeks. So check out my last up, my next update to see what ends up happening.